and welcome my name is Abby this is craft studio and I am back here with another video for you today um, I'm so glad you could join me and I don't know if you are this way um, but I am this way <laughs> uh, do you ever go down a craft rabbit hole I did <laughs> I did. I went down a craft rabbit hole, and if you would like to know um, what exactly happened as I was going down the rabbit hole, stick around. I'm going to share it all with you. <laughs> so a craft rabbit hole is what I'm calling it, is when you um, basically find something and it leads you to another thing, and it leads you to another thing, and it leads you to another thing. Okay, that's what this is basically about. So, what happened was, um, I um, started, it all started with this book, let's say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. This is from one of my good friends. She sent it to me. I love this book. So, I was flipping through it, and I came to this lovely little pattern. Okay, it's a vintage classic granny blanket is it's meant for a doll bed um but uh I, I i i really liked it and i wanted to i wanted to start making that normally i try to stay away from black yarn just because it's hard to see um it's kind of depressing i like lots of color uh so i was i don't use black yarn a whole lot okay but when i saw that I don't know, something just went, and I wanted to make a classic vintage or whatever you want to call it, granny square blanket. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I set out to do. Um, but I had no black yarn because I, I never used it. Uh, so I had to purchase a big skein of black yarn so I could get started, um, which I did. I got the Karen one pound. Haw! Oh, that's a lot of yarn. <laughs> I ordered this off Amazon. But I also wanted um, some vintage or muted or old looking colors. Um, so what I, I, I ended up going with, um, I found this pretty brown kind of, um, it's not, I guess you could say speckled. Um, and I found this really pretty, now this does have speckles in it, uh, kind of a golden and goldenish yellow. And I found this pretty, I think it's pretty, um, this is called Scarlet. And then I thought this was beautiful. Um, this is Beret Day. So I thought those were really old-fashioned, vintage-looking colors, and I think they would go really good with the black. So, but I didn't want to do the classic granny square where you have um, like five different colors, um, five different rounds, and then the border. I wanted to do something a little different. So what I ended up doing, I decided just to make the center um, and if you watched my video I put out, I think, a week ago, I shared a little bit about it. Um, so I started just making little centers in all of the colors of the, um, all the colors that I chose. And then using the black going around them. So I have, I, I made several of them, <laughs> uh, of these little centers. And honestly, to, to, I've seen other uh, podcasters do this, and, and I always wondered, I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you sit there and make a bunch of little centers and then go back and, and, and go around them? I'm like, why don't you just make one square at a time? That's always been my mindset, you know, just make one square at a time and just go on, you know. But I am telling you, I know now <laughs> why they do that. It is so much fun. It is so much fun to sit there and make a bunch of little, these little tiny, I don't know, there's just, and then you fill it up. I have this 
basket I've been putting them in. It's just a little basket a friend gave to me. But anyway, um, yeah, you just fill it up. And it is so much fun. And then when you get bored of that, which happens happens to me, I don't know if it happens to you, then you, you take the centers and you go around them. And you, you make your granny squares. And uh, when you get bored of that, you can go back to making the centers. It's, I think, and this is my humble opinion, you may disagree, others may disagree, um, but that's fine. But in my humble opinion, I think this kind of helps keep your momentum going because you're not sitting there doing the same thing over and over and over. You're, you're, you're kind of changing it up. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, anyway, it did for me. <laughs> so what I, my goal was, cause these are kind of little baskets I'm keeping them in. Um, so I wait till the basket gets full or I get bored, whichever comes first. And then I move on, you know, to the next segment. Um, once this basket gets full of the squares, I will start making the strips. Um, so this may take a while, but if you have been watching this channel, if you know me at all, you know that I have trouble finishing things. I get excited. I am able to start things, but I have trouble finishing things. I have trouble sticking with things. Um, this is, you know, this time in my life is no exception. Um, now that I'm working, I am, I, <laughs> I, I sit down to uh, crochet or knit or sew or whatever it is. And I just, I just don't have as much time. Um, but I still love to do it. So what I have decided to do is share this with you, share this project with you um, as, as I make progress and that will hopefully, hopefully, in theory, help me to work on it, help me to keep up with it and uh, not put it down. Or I, not put it down, but I mean to help me to finish it. Okay. Found, well let's start here, on one of the bands of the yarn. I found this pattern. It is called the, let me see, stained glass hexagon afghan. I don't know if you can see that too well. I saw that and I was just thrilled. I said that's beautiful. I said that's gorgeous. I have the black yarn already. Um, and they look pretty um, I've made a hexagon blanket before. It was for my dad, and I really loved making it. But they were pretty big hexagons. They were, they were, I think, I don't know the inches or dimensions, but they were pretty big. But I had a blast making that for my dad. And I don't think I've made one since. So I sat down and decided to try this pattern. It was a free pattern on the back of the label. And so I decided I wanted to see if it was difficult. If it, was, if it was easy, if it was quick. So that's what I did. So I made, this was the first one, little one I made. And I just used some scrap yarn that I had in my basket. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and I really like it. So I made another one and then I put this border around it. And I really like the, um, I can't remember what color this is. <laughs> but um, to make the hexagon bigger, I thought about adding another round, oops, before I do the border. But um, I really like the small, the small, if you can see how small they are. I really like how small they are. I didn't want them huge. So I think I will keep them this size. Um, and this is a f number four weight yarn. And I believe I used a four millimeter hook just to make the, the stitches and the yarn tighter. I think that's what I did. But I really like this. I think this might, I know this is a Hirschner's yarn. I think it was like parchment or something. I can't remember. Um, but I really like the colors. They're bright. They're cheery. Um, springy, if you will. Summery, whatever. Maybe I was just hoping for something summery. Anyway, so after I did that, okay, another step down the rabbit hole. So we started with the granny, the vintage granny. Then we moved on to the hexagons. Then 
I looked on another ball of yarn. <laughs> I know you guys are, are with me on this. You're with me, right? Don't leave me out here alone. I found another pattern on a ball band of yarn. Can you see that? This is called Peacock Squares, and it is a crochet mitered square. I've never done a crochet mitered square. I'll show you it again. And they used a variegated yarn and then um, two solid colors to kind of frame it. But I just, I, I wanted to try it. I, I wanted to see how it goes. I wanted to see if it was difficult. I wanted to see how, how nice it would look. Um, so I did, I tried it, okay? So here is my very first crochet mitered square. Here it is. Um, it was not difficult. I do like how it turned out and I like the colors I used. <laughs> it was quick. But um, I'm just going to be honest, it was a little um, boring. It was, it was kind of boring. I don't know that I could keep up with it to make an afghan. But I'm glad I know how to do it now. I tried it. Um, I, I like it, okay? Then I remembered another step down the rabbit hole. Then I remembered I've made a knit mitered square before. So the wheels in my head started turning and I was thinking, well, what it was, was it was a big mitered square and it was, it came with one of my Annie's, um, uh, block of the month. So I made a, it was a big one. It was probably a nine inch square mitered square, but that was the last time I had made that. And I only made one, I think. So I had done it before. Not want to make a large square. I wanted to make a little smaller one. Um, so what I did was I went searching on YouTube for a tutorial because um, I wasn't sure uh, the the yarn I wanted to use was a number four, but I wasn't sure what needle size would work um, and the stitch count. I was wasn't too sure about the stitch count. So anyway, I did find a, a tutorial on the metered square knit, and that was from Very Pink, um, and she's here on YouTube. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. She has a great tutorial. Um, so anyway, and she had on there how to change color um, when you're doing the mitered square. So this was the first one I made, and I did change colors, and uh, I like it. I like how spongy it is. I, you know how it is. The garter stitch is real spongy. It's so soft. and um, But it was too small. It's too small. So I either needed to go up a needle size or go up in my stitches. And um, I, I didn't want it too loose. Um, so what I did, I just moved up one needle size and I moved up my stitches. So this was the very first one. It's a little small. So I made another one. And this was the second one I made. Let me put that one down if you can see that. Okay? See that okay? Yeah. So I love this yarn. I, I This color, the white and um, like pink and there's some yellow. It's called My Fuzzy Slippers or My Cozy Slippers. And then this color, I can't remember what it's called. Um, if I find it, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but they're both from Hobby Lobby. Um, I love this yarn. So anyway, after I watched the tutorial on the mitered square, that sent me on another rabbit hole because she shared some other patterns that were available for free on her website, verypink.com. <laughs> so I went to her website and I was searching through the knit patterns she has on her website. And one of them was for a 
dishcloth, spiral dishcloth, and what was the other? Something, something from that point, I can't remember exactly what, sent me to, um, oh, well, I wanted to figure out how to um, put the squares together, okay? Instead of making a bunch of squares and then seaming them together, which is what I normally do for an afghan if I'm making blocks. But um, I know how to do that okay with crochet, but knitting is just a little bit different. So I set out to look on how to maybe join the squares as you're making them so it's not um, making a bunch of squares and then putting them together, which is what I'm already doing for the granny square afghan. And if I decide to go ahead with this, the hexagon blanket, then I will be doing that as well. But, <laughs> which led me to another video, which led me to another lady, Cheryl Burnett, I believe. And I will put a link to her down in the description box. Yes. Watching her video really, um, it was, it was very good. She did an excellent tutorial on how to join the squares and make them as you're going. And I think that is another great thing that'll help me to, or motivate me to continue on instead of making squares and then you have a pile of squares and you're like, oh man, now I've got to weave in the ends and sew them together. Or I would sew them together and then weave in all the ends, however you do it. I don't know. I, I, you know, we all have our own ways of doing it, but I watched her video and I found out how to put them together as you're doing them. So basically you, or is that upside down? Hang on. I don't remember which way I started. See, look at that. Anyway, I made the first square and then she showed me how to pick up the stitches and continue on making another square. And then after I finished that square, I picked up stitches along this side and made the other square. So the last thing I have to do is make another square. But I'm going to continue on with this. I don't know for how long, but I'm telling you, this was amazing to me. Knitting is such a mysterious thing some things, some certain things in knitting, I still have so much to learn, but this, this was huge for me. This was a huge deal for me. And I'm so it's, 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 I still have things to fix. I still have things to learn. Um, but I'm pretty, pretty proud of this. I'm pretty proud of this. <laughs> so there you go. And I will share this progress as well. If you're interested to follow along. So if you would like the pattern for the crochet mitered square afghan, it is a free pattern. It's from Lion Brand. You can uh, download it. Um, I think it is really pretty, actually, now that I looked at it. Um, and the guidelines for the knit blanket is, is used from that pattern. Um, so that is, again, Knitting with Cheryl Burnett. I will put a link to the... Uh, to her channel, to the video I saw. It's all going to be down below for you. <clears throat> also, if you want to download the free pattern from Lion Brand, it's actually in her description box um, under the video for the afghan. So she shows how to knit the mitered square. Um, she shows you how to pick up stitches and then how to piece it all together um, to make to make the afghan. So that is something that I will be working on. And next week, uh, my family and I will be going away on our vacation for my husband and I's anniversary. So I'm very excited about that. I will be taking a couple pr uh, projects with me to work on. So I won't have a video up for you next week. I'm sorry. But as soon as I get back, I will uh, hopefully have some progress uh, on some, um, um, on these afghans for you so I can show you. Um, uh, one other thing I wanted to share with you really fast, if you still have some time, if you want to stick around, um, I did uh, go to a antique shop. I found a few treasures that I wanted to share with you. This is just for fun. Um, I haven't done any sewing um, recently, but 
I did pick up this cute little lady. This is a handmade Raggedy Ann doll. And, um, yeah, her apron string is... <laughs> Some things I could fix on her, but I just thought she was a lovely little gal. And I just had to pick her up. And everything on, on her face was hand-stitched. Um, her uh, body, I believe, is made from muslin. And she's got a cute little dress. She's got an apron. She's got a little slip and then some bloomers and her little tights and her little shoes which are made of felt. Um, so I just think she was so cute and so beautiful and she's even got a little bow in her hair and <clears throat> I really wanted to pick her up. I would like to um, use this kind of as a um, guide to make a doll like this for my girls. I had a Raggedy Ann doll when I was a little girl and my grandmother had purchased it for me and uh, I, I really liked that doll. In fact, I played with it until it fell apart. Um, but anyway, I would really like to uh, use this as a guide to make one for my daughters. Uh, we'll make one for each of my daughters. But I just thought I would pick her up. She was just a couple dollars and just take good care of her and treasure her. Um, and also, the other thing I found next to it, which I thought was absolutely perfect, was this vintage book, The Adventures of Raggedy Ann. Uh, written and illustrated by Johnny Gruel, or Gruel. Uh, so I picked that up as well. They were actually sitting on the same shelf together, but they were not next to each other. So it was kind of cool that I found it, and I've been reading it to my daughters. Um, so I was very excited to find this book. And it even has um, a little um, note on the inside. Happy birth, happy ninth birthday, Christine from Mother and Daddy. So some little girl got this for her ninth birthday. I just love that. I love knowing a little bit of history of stuff that I can buy. It has some pictures in it. It has some um, black and white pictures and it also has some colored pictures. Um, and the writing, I, I just have to say, it's it's amazing. It really is amazing. I just have to say that um, in reading one of the stories to my daughters, some of the words they use are not really words we really say nowadays. And I mean, I still got the gist of what they were trying to say, but it was just different back then. It was just different. So anyway, I really, I really am happy to have found this and I'm trying to find the year of when this was, um, but there's no year in it at all. So that's kind of sad. I would like to know what year this is. But anyway, like I said, there's some, um, there's some black and white pictures in it. And then there were some beautiful color pictures. If I can find one really fast. It's a pretty colored picture. If you can see that, yeah. So this was a treasure to find, and I am so glad that I found it. And oh, look at the look at the front. Look at the front. So and I've showed you fabric panels before. They're basically already um, the instructions and the objects are already on the fabric. So you just use your scissors, you cut around them, and you sew them. Very simple, very easy. Um, so that's what they're called fabric panels. And I found quite a few of them that were all together. Um, <clears throat> I found some in a quilt shop also, um, but I was just so excited to find. This is an Amish, let me see if I can get it up here for you, Amish um, doll. So you just cut it out the doll shape, if you can see it there, has all the instructions and then you cut out the pieces for the clothing 
and sew them together. So that was one I found. And I was so excited, let me tell you how much excited. <laughs> and I found this adorable one. This is called Homespun Hannah, an American doll. And this is a little girl doll with her quilt. So you make the little doll with her little quilt and it comes with all the clothes. And then of course the instructions are already on the fabric. So you just follow the instructions, very simple. It has the piece, oops, has the pieces. See her arms there and her um, bloomers and her the pieces for her dress, all that. So that's called Homespun Hannah. There's that. So I found that. If that wasn't enough, <laughs> uh, I found this one. This is Cinderella and her pumpkin or Cinderella and pumpkin. Let me show you this side. Might be a little easier, sorry. So there's all the pieces to make Cinderella, the prince, her dress, the pumpkin, all of that. I don't know if you can see that very well. But here's a little picture on the front. So I thought this would be a fun thing that I could maybe um, make with my daughters to kind of get them sewing and that would be kind of an easier thing for them to work on um, since it's already all kind of done for you you just cut it out and sew it together um, so then they could actually make their own doll I found this turkey fabric turkey which my grandmother had a pillow it was not exactly like this but it was very similar and so, for sentimental reasons, I bought that. <laughs> and then this is a bunny, a little fabric bunny. So it has all the pieces, you just cut them out, and sew them together, and then all the directions are on there. And it shows you there at the bottom, if you can see that. <laughs> so this is called a fabric panel. And, um, yep, that's basically what it is. So, you can find these on um, Etsy. I've found a lot on Etsy. If you go to any quilt shop, they will usually have some. Um, you can also make, like, those soft toy books for, like, babies, you know, that are fabric pages. I've seen those. You can make little animals for them to play with, which I've already showed that. I made... Um, cow, a pig, sheep, and a chicken. So yeah, there's just lots of, um, and the dolls of course, there's just lots of many options for you to choose from. Easy sewing if you want to make a gift for someone or, um, or even for yourself. So there you go. All right. I think that is all I had to share with you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. I will see you in a week. No, not next week, the week after.